Hello and welcome to the business story on FBNC um, Trinle. Now, as the uh, wave of the revolution technology 4.0 has been gradually dominating all the economic activities, including manufacturing, trade, finance, and services, digital transformation has become a key trend, especially when the world just now has been slowly getting over the pandemic and the businesses adapting to the new normal. Yet, not many businesses understand how to. Uh, convert successfully and uh, conveniently from the current platforms to make operating management more um, effective. And today's program, we will discuss about an ideal solutions for that. And we have an honor to introduce our guest today. That is Mr. Morgan Duarte, Business Vice President, Secure Power Division at Snyder Electric Vietnam. Good morning, uh, Mr. Morgan. How are you today? Very good, thank you. Thank you for having me today, uh, Ms. Chin. Thank you, and this is our pleasure to have you on uh, our program. Now, first of all, um, how have you been coping with the, the crisis, the virus crisis here in Vietnam and also at other places in the world, at Snyder Electric? So this has put a lot of uh, pressure on the way we work, uh, especially uh, work from home, uh, having all the system in place to uh, be able to enable our employee. Uh, to work at home and to uh, ensure we have a continuity in our business. So this has been the most uh, difficult uh, part of this uh, pandemic, uh, but we have been able to implement a lot of solution um, to cope with that basically. Right, because I believe that any, um, all of the businesses are trying to uh, kind of get over it and with solutions and with strategies that have been changed a lot uh, compared to before. Um, so now talking uh, to the topic today, that is edge uh, computing. So I like to um, kind of explain what I understand mm. about it because we are in the era of cloud computing, mm. right? Well, so where all of the data are processed at the data centers and on the cloud, uh, but so far not so much on the devices. Mm. but now at the uh, time of IoT, so where all of the devices like uh, uh, TV and refrigerators and light pop and even curtains are now all connected and they are very smart. But I imagine that a huge amount of data from billions of IoT devices like that, if we transfer into the cloud, process there and then waiting for the results to come back so that might cause delay right. and hence uh, came the born of edge computing right. right so um how long ago has it been available up to now and can you share with us in details about this new technology sure. first of all with uh, with this pandemic we've seen a drastic acceleration of the digital transformation okay i think we are all saying that maybe uh, this pandemic has put so much pressure that we have advanced several years into most of our digital transformation. Mm -hmm. So this is even accelerating uh, what we discussed about the IoT, Internet of Things, yeah. but also the AI, artificial intelligence, or the Industry 4.0. Right. And at the end, as you mentioned, it's all about sensors, data, etc. In the past, uh, it was mostly processed in the cloud, mm -hmm. but we're seeing more and more needs to process as close as possible to the application, we call it the edge, yeah. for several reasons. First reason is usually the latency, the time to transfer some data, the response time, so it has to be very short. Yeah. It has to be also the bandwidth to say um, the cost of doing this transfer to the cloud may be too expensive. And also for regulation, uh, for example, in Vietnam, the government is stating that the data must remain in Vietnam mm -hmm. for the Vietnam citizen. So we are seeing that, that is pushing basically the demand of edge computing. And it's all about processing the data as close as the application as possible. Right? So I imagine that um, here is the cloud and here is the dev uh, devices. And edge computing is, is the middle layer. So exactly. In fact, it's a, we can have a hybrid environment like that with cloud and, uh, and edge. Mm -hmm. uh, but if to give some concrete example, uh, I'm sure you have been maybe going to some shops to uh, let's say a uh, gongcha for some drinks or something like that, you may see some digital signage. And uh, it means that in some shops in the past, we did not have any IT equipment, now we have. Mm -hmm. So those could be connected to the cloud, but it also means locally on site, we have some IT equipment, IT devices. Yeah. Okay, uh, so as far as I understand, uh, edge computing, the main role of edge computing is to process data more quicker. Uh, than uh, if we bring it into cloud. But uh, I know that there are and many other benefits of edge computing as well. 
So in fact, first we say, Gartner, sorry, Gartner say that by 2022, so very soon, 75% yeah. uh, of the data will be processed at the edge. So it's something very massive to say it's a big shift from cloud to uh, edge. Of course, cloud is still growing very fast, but edge even faster. Okay. So the, the benefit, it's of course, as I mentioned, uh, first to, uh, for some constraint about bandwidth, latency and regulation, but then it's also for the businesses uh, to digitize their processes, to improve the customer experience, uh, to improve, I would say, their operations as well, but some of the businesses are taking it even further to have new stream of business thanks to edge application. Mm -hmm. So if I take some example of a customer uh, experience, I mentioned about some shops where you can buy uh, your product with some screen, right? You have some uh, kiosk to buy the, the product. But some of the shops are even automating their cashier system. In Vietnam or in overseas, some cashier system are automatic. It could be also for the, uh, for the process in some factories. More and more factories are uh, moving to uh, Industry 4.0, meaning to automate the manufacturing. It means that now in the factory, there's also some IT equipment to uh, control the process, optimize the process, etc. Right. Uh, so if you don't mind, because I'm mm. not a technology mm. person, uh, so I'd like to know more about your explanation in a kind of plain language. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned about uh, automatic the cash uh, system. Uh, how does it work? Can you just explain? Sure, sure. Yeah. So I, I'll give a few examples. One that maybe you have heard in US, Amazon Go, which is a, I mean, a big uh, now retail uh, branch where you just enter in the shop, you take your product that you want, you leave the shop, that's right. it. You don't okay. pay anything, you don't have to scan your product, etc. It's all automatic, they have some CCTV mm -hmm. to check I mean, who you are based maybe on your ID, what product you take, what product you leave. And after they send you the invoice automatically based on your credit card, etc., on your Amazon account. So we're seeing that in the uh, in US, but also in Vietnam, we're having some shop like Coop Mart, that are putting scan and go to say that you have some scanner, you just scan the product you want, you don't even need to put that in your trolley, then you can pay and the grocery will be delivered to your home. Right. So this is basically a way to improve the customer experience through digitization. Right. It sounds amazing, but risky at the same time, <laughs> right? Because, uh, no, not risky, but scary at the same time, because uh, I, I can't imagine that one day uh, here in Vietnam we can do like that. But of course, talking about that, um, there are risks, right, and challenges to edge computing. So in fact, it's uh, edge application are already in Vietnam. Okay, mm -hmm. so I can give more example later on if you want. But of course, there are some challenges uh, and opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, the main challenge that we are seeing it's more the how re uh, resilient are the system, how predictable are the system. Mm -hmm. uh, all the data that we have normally are in data center. Those are extremely professional way of processing the data. You have a high degree of availability. You know that maybe your picture on Facebook will be always there, uh, that you can connect remotely uh, without any issue. Uh, but in the shop that you go, if any issue happen with IT equipment, you may have issue of a customer experience. Uh, if the cashier system doesn't work anymore, you lose business. Sure. Right? So it's a lot about availability. Mm -hmm. The second point is about uh, cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, in data center, you have professional people uh, to manage that, professional system also to uh, fight cybersecurity. In those small places where normally we don't put IT equipment, we start to put IT equipment, how about cybersecurity? And as we know, the first part of cybersecurity is physical uh, security, right. meaning the easiest way to get in a system is physically to access it. Mm -hmm. And if you go to some places, you might find some IT equipment on the side. Uh, that you can actually access physically and right. maybe mess with the data. Or like turn off the, the power. <laughs> turn off the power, yeah. uh, if it's uh, simple like that, or connect to the system, get all the data that the server is having, and maybe do uh, some harmful things with those data. So that is just some of the risks that you just mentioned. And how about the challenges regarding infrastructure, costing, and all that uh, about Edge computing. Yes, yeah, so uh, one of the challenges about the infrastructure will be the monitoring. Um, very often those places are in remote places or maybe distributed places, meaning many IT infrastructure in many shops, many hospitals, etc. Uh, it's, you don't have people on site, uh, IT people on site to manage it. So you need to have a solid monitoring system to make sure the health of the equipment is good. 
that you don't have any issue, and if any issue happens, that you can fix it remotely, or even better, you can fix it before it happens. And here we talk about predictive uh, analytics. Okay. So that's one of the challenges, but with some solution that we have to, uh, to cope with that. Yeah. Welcome back to this business story on FBNC and we will now continue to discuss with Mr. Morgan Duarte at Snyder Electric Vietnam. Uh, welcome back to the show. Um, now we've talked about the challenges and some of the major risks uh, of edge computing but of course that there are many solutions to that as well. And can you just give us some of the solutions that are available now at Snyder um, Electric Vietnam? So Schneider Electric is a global leader in energy management and automation. And what we do basically is to connect processes to our customer, uh, help them to make data-driven decisions and help them to improve your overall efficiency of a system, either for building, industry, data center, or for infrastructure. So we have launched uh, several years ago our EcoStructure platform, which is basically an IoT-enabled platform, meaning it's ready to connect IoT product to it. Uh, it's vendor neutral, meaning it's not only Schneider equipment, it can be any other equipment that are following the IoT standard. And that is open, open meaning people can also use all the data that is being generated by this platform. Mm -hmm. So this platform, it's an architecture where we start with connected product, meaning our customer, they want good product, but now they want connected product to gain insight about those solution and to help them improve their, their uh, efficiency or operations. So we start with connected product. On top of it, we put edge control, which is basically to control those devices, those those uh, product uh, on site mm -hmm. to control, manage, access, etc. And we'll have a third layer, which is apps analytics and services, which is basically to take all this data that is being generated and provide insight to the customer. One example is we can provide predictive analytics for some of the equipment inside the data center or inside edge uh, computing to show to the customer when an issue happens and fix it before it happens. Right. So does that mean that we have uh, two parts. What is the hardware parts, and the other uh, part is that applications okay. that run into that kind exactly. of system. Um, but specifically, uh, what kind of businesses? Because you uh, talked about uh, many uh, type of businesses that can kind of uh, install and apply the edge computing, use edge computing. So we. In fact, Gartner mentioned 75% uh, of the data will be processed in the edge uh, by 2022. It, it means quite a lot of application. Um, and in fact, of course, you always start with a critical application. And this will happen if it's about digital experience or for safety, etc. So we can see applications of retail, uh, banking, with e-payment system, etc. We can see healthcare system. We can see as well uh, industries. So uh, just to take an example of uh, industry, some of our customers in Vietnam yeah. are already using some new technology, which is augmented reality. So maybe you know what it is. You have a tablet or a smartphone. You can scan some of your facility, some of your factory, your uh, manufacturing plant, mm -hmm. and you can have some additional information to it to see if any issue happen with a plant or with a manufacturing line, what do you need to do, and it can also help you to operate some complicated machine, where normally you need to send some uh, highly skilled uh, engineer here. Of course, you still need those skills, but it will help you step by step how to do it with a screen, similar to Pokemon Go, basically, which is uh, augmented reality as well, but for the business of factories. In terms of healthcare, it's another approach as well. We're having some companies in Vietnam, uh, not to name them, to say that they are doing remote uh, health check, especially during the, the pandemic situation that we had, yeah. to do remotely health check and to connect all this data to some clinics as well that we have a network with. Like that, when you go after to the clinics, all the data is connected and they can trace back um, all the diagnostic that has been done. Right, so the size of the visas that can apply edge, um, is there any particular size that can only apply the edge, but not any other types? No, in fact, uh, it's so diverse, the edge application, because it's linked to the IoT. It yeah. can be from very small um, shop, very small company, right. to a large company, mm -hmm. uh, global 100 company. Just to give some example, we are having in Vietnam some small uh, haircut, hair dryer, mm -hmm. that are putting smart mirror. 
like that you can choose uh, the style that you want, etc. Yeah. So they're having that one, meaning there's some IT equipment in the, in the shop. Or you're having big company, maybe like Saigon Co-op, uh, that are investing massively in their IT system for all the shops that they have to make it more digital. Okay, so I'm getting a, a more clearer picture now. Um, so that means that the applications of the edge can be used uh, individually, uh, can it be? Yes. Um, or we have to install the full big system of edge? So it can be very small scale system. Uh, and we have some solution that what we call 6U solution, which is a very small form factor of uh, IT equipment that can go in the shop or something like that. Uh, that will be um, one of the solution for small applications. Right. And in some larger cases, they have a lot more data to process. Um, and they will need a full scale solution, which is one rack, 10 racks, some very large, I would say, system uh, to process the data that they have on site. Right, and um, you know that we are still in the crisis of the virus pandemic, and I've read a lot of uh, companies and entrepreneurs that they come up with a very new uh, applications or new technology to kind of cope with the new normal. So at Snyder Electric, um, is any is any applications or solutions that born out of the crisis? Yes, um, we. In, in fact, before the, uh, the crisis, we were already communicating about that, which is a lot of remote monitoring, remote management. Right. And we have seen during this crisis a, an explosion sure. of a need mm -hmm. of such solution. Uh, for example, we have some, uh, we call it in IT, but we call it DCIM, which is basically to manage the data center, to manage the edge solution in a remote manner, uh, being cloud-based or on-premises, which is a system to control the health of the equipment. Uh, we were communicating that, uh, in fact, last year, uh, and we have seen during this uh, difficult situation uh, high demand for such solution because all the IT employees uh, or IT professionals could not go on site to fix the issue or uh, they would prefer to stay at home and work from home, so they needed more connected product. All right, Mr. Morgan, um, we'll come back and talk more about the uh, local markets and how Edge can operate in the Vietnamese Understood. environment where the program returns. Okay. Thank you. We'll come back with more with Mr. Morgan Duarte about Edge Computing in the next part of the program. Please stay with us. À, như chúng ta đều biết, trung tâm dữ liệu dù lớn hay nhỏ, nó đều phải đáp ứng cái nhu cầu cho thiết bị IT để đảm bảo thiết bị IT hoạt động một cách ổn định và lâu dài. À, Snyder Electric là một tập đoàn hàng đầu thế giới về sản phẩm và giải pháp cho hạ tầng trung tâm dữ liệu. Thì cùng với một cách tiếp cận như vậy, chúng tôi đưa ra cái sản phẩm và giải pháp cho trung tâm dữ liệu nhỏ hay còn gọi là trung tâm dữ liệu vùng biên. À, đáp ứng các cái nhu cầu như là về tiêu chuẩn hóa, về an ninh vật lý cũng như là về khả năng giám sát. Về tiêu chuẩn hóa thì chúng tôi tích hợp toàn bộ trong cùng một sản phẩm đáp ứng cái nhu cầu về hệ thống liên tục về nguồn, về phân phối nguồn và làm mát cho thiết bị IT. Về an ninh vật lý chúng tôi cung cấp các giải pháp về đảm bảo an toàn an ninh cho thiết bị cũng như giải pháp về giám sát môi trường cho thiết bị. Về khả năng giám sát thì chúng tôi cung cấp các giải pháp giám sát từ xa, tích hợp tập trung dựa trên cái hệ thống Eco Structure IT và giúp cho khách hàng giám sát cái hệ thống của mình một cách liên tục và 247. À, tất cả các yếu tố trên thì chúng tôi được tích hợp sẵn từ trong nhà từ nhà máy và chúng tôi được xây dựng hoàn chỉnh cho khách hàng một sản phẩm hoàn chỉnh để để giúp cho khách hàng tiếp cận với nhu cầu một cách dễ dàng hơn, đơn giản hơn. Và khách hàng chỉ cần cắm điện, cấp mạng và chúng ta đã có một cái hạ tầng cho thiết bị IT hoàn chỉnh. Và chúng tôi có rất nhiều cái lựa chọn cho khách hàng với nhiều ứng dụng khác nhau. Những lựa chọn từ uh, những thiết bị từ 6U cho tới 42U và áp dụng cho các môi trường như văn phòng, như tòa nhà, như giao thông hoặc là những môi trường đặc biệt khác như là dầu khí chẳng hạn. Welcome back to the business story on FBNC and we've been discussing with Mr. Morgan Duarte from Snyder Electric Vietnam about uh, the edge uh, computing, an inevitable trend 
in uh, the IoT era, and we will uh, talk more about the local markets and how edge can, can apply to, uh, with the uh, Vietnamese businesses and community. Uh, welcome back, Mr. Morgan. Uh, you have shared with us uh, some of the examples about how the edge has been uh, deployed in other countries, but how about in Vietnam? How has it been helping the uh, local uh, businesses here? We are seeing quite a lot of customers actually uh, embracing this IoT uh, era, as you mentioned. Uh, we are seeing some applications very concrete, for example, in warehousing. Uh, if it can be for e-commerce, for some large e-commerce uh, player in Vietnam that are digitizing their uh, warehouse to make it more automatic. We are also seeing some industries, uh, some of our local customers are also digitizing their manufacturing plants using augmented reality to uh, manage and service their equipment on site. Or we're seeing also on in the retail. Yeah. I think I already mentioned with some co-op marts that are doing scale and go, but we are also other brands that are embracing this type of technology to avoid having uh, using a trolley and just scan all the product that can after be delivered directly to your home. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing different applications uh, that are happening in Vietnam now. Right, so you've been at Snyder uh, Electric Vietnam, you've been partnering with, uh, of course, many um, corporations and um, Vietnamese companies, um, but you've been working here in Vietnam for five years, right? And how is the awareness of the companies, are they aware that there is the must that they need to transform their um, system from the current platforms? I think that uh, in Vietnam, the IoT trend is still at the early stage mm -hmm. compared to maybe some other countries, but are actually moving extremely fast. Sure. We might not talk a lot about uh, autonomous car, like as we can talk in US or in Europe, uh, but the reality is still happening. We still have some pilot of autonomous car in Vietnam. Yeah. Um, and the, most of the players and companies are actually probably jumping technology to go to the latest technology directly uh, and are drastically improving their efficiency in the processes, mm -hmm. uh, digitizing their company or the way they interact with customer and trying to find new business stream with this type of technology. So it's, uh, it's happening quite fast. Uh, and at Schneider Electric, we're actually seeing some of our local customer, uh, either it's for data center, building or industry, yeah. to really move to those technologies. Right, so that is the advantage of Vietnam because we, uh, if considering we're quite li late in technology development compared to other countries, but we we in a stage where we can develop quite fast, right? Uh, because we don't have much to change in the current uh, system, but um, the majority of the Vietnamese businesses are small and mediums, and their mindset is quite. I'm not sure about it, but uh, I can imagine that they might say it's not as technology kind of uh, thinking uh, compared to big corporations. Is, is that true? I think uh, actually in Vietnam you have quite a lot of startups. Uh, you have a lot. You have a young population that are very demanding on new technology as well. So uh, I think it's beyond the big corporation that uh, definitely understand the need of that one. We are, yeah. we are seeing also a lot of small companies, uh, startups as well, that are really embracing those technology to differentiate themselves, to innovate, and to try to be more sustainable for the future as well. Okay, it's good to hear because young generation is always more tech savvy, right? And uh, so what are the advices that you have for uh, the local businesses in applying the the edge more effectively? So it, it goes first on the digital transformation. Um, if you don't do it, you might be left out of a game. Yeah. Okay? So it's first to embrace those new technologies that are happening, all the different applications. Of course, there's some challenges mm -hmm. and some risk. So far as your advice is always to go for it, but in a very structured and in an experimentation manner. Meaning you go, you test it, and you scale it up. So that's really the advice that I have for uh, the, the Vietnamese, I would say, um, tissue of economy, is to embrace those technology, do step by step, uh, have the right solution that you need to ensure that it's a resilient system on all your IT, but experiment, experiment, and go for it. Right. And just the last question, and I think that many people like to know about this, that is the cost side of it. Of course, uh, it really depends about what you try to achieve. Uh, so it's depending on the objective of this digital transformation. Um, 
many or very often uh, um, the cost is there, but it will transform your customer experience. Yeah. You might find new business revenue thanks to that, or you might have some saving in the operation excellence or the process automation, etc. So most of the company are going for that. Okay, mm -hmm. and now all the cost of the hardware, for example are significantly reduced because we can have sensors that are also very cheap now. So it's something much more affordable and that's why we see a drastic acceleration. So the ROI is there. Of course, it's based on the objective that you want to do. You need to do some uh, study, I would say, uh, if you want to, to do it. Um, but we are seeing many, many customers going there because uh, there is either uh, positive cash flow or pos positive return on it uh, financially or for the innovation or for the customer experience. Okay, so it accommodates uh, a wide variety of needs of the businesses, right? So that has been our business story on um, FBNC about the edge computing, an inevitable trend in the IoT era. And we'd like to uh, thank you very much, Mr. Morgan Duarte, uh, for joining us here and giving us a lot of um, insights about the new technology. And I uh, believe that uh, that can accommodate the very uh, needs, especially um, in the time where we are facing a lot of difficulties. And we'd like to uh, take this opportunity to uh, wish you and and your colleagues at Snyder Electric a lot of health and success in the future. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you and my pleasure to come. Thank you. Thank you.